When we started in 2011, uh, our whole goal was to brew farm to glass beer. Uh, it proved to be a lot harder than we expected. There were only 16 acres of hops under cultivation in New York State at the time. It was a real challenge, even on a two barrel system, to source locally grown ingredients. In early 2013, they introduced the farm brewery law and what it did was it created a new license class that gave some benefits to brewers who were choosing to use in-state grown raw materials like hops and barley. In response to this legislation, we have seen breweries increase uh, by over 250%. We have seen 12 new malt houses come online. We have seen a 500% increase in malting barley acreage. And we've seen a handful of hops processors come online too. So there's been a tremendous response to this legislation. You really can't make beer out of just raw grains. So you need to modify it, you need to create malt. That barley, that malt, is the base of all beers. It's also the backbone of the beer with the color and flavor and bold taste. When you're shooting for a certain style of beer, there are guidelines that I have to hit on the end where it needs to be a certain color, it needs to be a certain alcohol level, it needs to have certain characteristics or else I can't put it out there as a certain kind of beer. So when I look for my malt, the quality and the consistency is paramount. Supply is key. Uh, that's been a challenge. That's one of the challenges uh, from the beginning of this endeavor is getting the right kind of barley, being grown properly, being harvested properly, being stored properly. We were wheat growers for, you know, a few generations, I think. And then um, when the farm brewery legislation passed, we saw an, uh, an opportunity to uh, diversify in both hops and barley. There is a lot of risk involved when you're getting into a new crop like barley. When you need to move your product, whether it's corn, soybeans, wheat, there are mills that are well established that you can find a home for it. This, this whole thing with barley is pretty fresh and new, so you are kind of feel like you're, you're in uncharted waters. Our goal in Harvest New York is really to grow the food and farming economy in New York State. And so barley naturally fits into that because it's really become an emerging market opportunity for our farms, supporting the market development and facilitating networks and connections between the supply chain players. What's really going on at Cornell University, we have researchers that are working on variety specific through genetics, working on developing those right varieties that are adapted to our, to our weather, adapted to our particular pests. Because if we don't control that, the product is done, our quality goes downhill, and, and, and our, our fight has ended. We are investigating a number of the disease organisms that cause problems in malting barley in New York State. Principal amongst these is a red pigmented fungus, a Fusarium graminiarum, which is the cause of Fusarium head blight. When we get Fusarium head blight in a, a crop of barley that we have really taken on the risk to make sure that it's malting grade, it can render that crop useless. As plant breeders, we're interested in developing new varieties that have uh, resist, good resistance to diseases. It's much more difficult to grow good quality malting barley than it is to grow good quality wheat or oats, for example. Uh, we're trying to develop a new malting barley variety in the shortest possible amount of time. This is still a very new crop for many people in New York, whether you're a breeder or a farmer or a maltster. So it's definitely been a collaborative effort on the research side and the Cornell Cooperative Extension side and with all the growers to try and learn about how are we actually gonna grow good quality malting barley year after year in New York. Cornell Cooperative Extension is actually the critical link between the varieties that we develop and the farmers and the maltsters because they are educating the farmers on how to grow malt and barley. They organize field days where we can talk about our research and disseminate our research to growers in the state uh, so they have some idea of what we're doing and we have an idea of what the growers are experiencing and um, what they really need in a malt and barley variety. The future is only going to get brighter for us, I think, you know, with the, with the support of the industry, with the breweries. We'll keep growing malting barley. I mean, there's probably 2,000 acres currently in the state right now. Probably half of that is out here in western New York. And I see these guys that are growing it successfully and making grade every year. They're getting bigger each year. Just the fact that everyone's coming together from different walks of life to understand the challenges and the opportunities inherent in all parts of the supply chain has been a really tremendous success story so far. We wanted to have a positive impact on our community, on the physical landscape, on local farms, 
um, keeping dollars a little bit closer to home. If brewers start to utilize more locally grown ingredients, we can start developing a real New York beer flavor. It's great for the economy. It helps us out tremendously and it helps everybody in the supply chain tremendously. The more we can uh, educate the consumer of local ingredients in their local beers, it's just gonna keep exploding. The work that is going on at our land grant institutions like Cornell, um, and then the extension work that is going on I can't tell you how valuable it's been for barley and to help mitigate our risk and, and help find crops that farmers can diversify into, I think is where we get long-term stability. Um, and I think this barley and um, what's going on is a great example of that.